All right, let me start out by just, I just want to thank, I can't thank the Pasco County Sheriff's Office and the Newport Ritchie Police Department enough. Uh, over the years, uh, we've developed a fantastic relationship, and uh, I want to thank Captain Hill and Chief McDonald, Pasco County Sheriff's Office, Lieutenant Cabbage, he's still out, he's still out in the field. Uh, the suspect is Richard Allen Hoskins, uh, Jr. He's a male, date of birth is 6182. Uh, the Port Ritchie Police Department knows this individual very well. We've run a few calls to his house for domestic issues. He was wanted by us for a domestic uh, felony battery by strangulation. And there are going to be some things during this conference that I can't give you the information about the victim and so forth. So uh, early this morning, there were three people in his, in his uh, uh, duplex. They were drinking, and uh, things got out of hand. At, at the point where it got, out of, got, got a little bit too much out of hand, the, uh, the witness uh, left. And as he left, the, uh, the witness happened to bump into one of the Port Ritchie police officers that was on patrol at approximately 6 o'clock this morning. He stopped the police officer and said that things had, they were drinking all night, things had gotten out of hand, and that Richard was holding uh, a female suspect, a female subject in the, in the, uh, the duplex against her will. Uh, that was also confirmed by a 911 call. The, uh, the witness made a 911 call to us, and he reiterated that. Also, he said that the uh, suspect was loading up his weapons. So as I was, I was called out, and I, uh, I called Captain Hill on the way in at about 6.30, and uh, Captain Hill and I uh, spoke about the circumstances, and it was at that time that, the, uh, that Captain Hill decided to, uh, to make it a SWAT call out. The reason for that, too, was the, uh, the, the, the uh, amount of weapons that he, uh, he's in possession of. Uh, uh, what happened then, well, I got on scene about 6, oh, 6.45, 6.50. The Newport Ritchie Police Department, along with the Port Ritchie Police Department, had the perimeter uh, contained, and we had it contained for the, uh, for the, out, for the incoming SWAT team. Uh, the uh, SWAT team uh, leaders got on scene, established a command post, and, then, and I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Chief McDonald. So I'm Chief George McDonald, Pasco Sheriff's Office. I'm the uh, Bureau Chief for the Joint Operations. Within my bureau, I have SWAT. At approximately uh, 0655, I authorize the use of SWAT uh, for this call out as a uh, assist of another agency, and that being Port Ritchie Police Department. At 0730, we, we sent out the all call for SWAT to have them arrive on scene. Uh, at approximately 859, we evacuated all the uh, residents near the uh, subjects. Uh, place of residence. At around 940, SWAT began the execution uh, of their planned uh, takedown of, of the uh, dwelling. At 1103, the arrest warrant was signed, and then shortly after that, at about 1108, we made entry uh, and we removed a female occupant from the residence. Uh, at 1112, uh, after making a detailed sweep of the residence, uh, it was determined that the suspect was no longer in that dwelling but had possibly crawled up the attic. At that time, we searched the adjacent, again, this is a duplex, so we uh, searched the adjacent uh, house, and at that time, at 11.25, we, uh, the, we put the suspect in, in custody. Uh, I, I won't go into SWAT tactics. I'll have Jared uh, provide any details on the SWAT operation itself. So, so we train for this event quite regularly. Um, what's on the slide behind you, that's the initial perimeter that Port Ritchie and New Port Ritchie Police Department set up. They set up a perimeter, they train for that, we train for that with our patrol guys, and then as SWAT arrives on scene, we'll take over the scene. So they had a great perimeter set up, Port Ritchie and New Port Ritchie. I was able to get to a scene. We, we designated a command post. From that command post, Chief DeCanio laid it out for me what they had. And as he's laying it out, we put a SWAT call out, and we started on the radio briefing all the SWAT members and our uh, hostage negotiators team as they were arriving. Once they got on scene, next slide. Uh, oh, OK. So the next slide, we started just flowing in behind uh, Port Ritchie PD and New Port Ritchie PD. And then the scene was um, our SWAT team for the execution of uh, safely getting the suspect out and taking care of all the neighbors. We had designated a, um, a safe zone area where we were going to put neighbors into as, as they came out. We, we evacuated one home. Does anybody have any questions? Were there any particular challenges just with this case? 
uh, as so far. Can you discuss any particular challenges you had knowing that there was somebody else in there? So, so absolutely. Knowing that there was a, there was a, a victim in the, in the house, we had uh, neighbors next door because it's a duplex. We had to get them out and the suspect being unresponsive whether he was in there or not. We did see movement in the house at some point during the uh, operation. Can you tell us more about him going up into the attic? How did you know he went up there and, and how did you get him out? So, so he had set up a, uh, a position in the, in the attic and then uh, the, the way we got him out is a SWAT tactic that, that we don't want to go into right now. So when mm -hmm. you say he set up a position, I mean, mm -hmm. was he hiding or was he, he waiting? He was hiding in there. Who was the female that was in that problem? Uh, it, initially, it was it was the uh, the victim. Uh, when we when we take the people out, and again, we don't want to go into too much detail, but when we take everybody out, we handcuff everybody for our safety. Uh, so she's actually the victim. We're not going to we're not going to name her, obviously, but uh, she's no longer in handcuffs. So. Uh, Were any weapons recovered from inside the home? Uh, not yet. There's a safe. There's a safe there that we're going to look into, uh, uh, trying to get a search warrant for it, and and uh, and going and, and look for the weapons. But initially, no. The scene is still secured. We're still processing that. The uh, crime scene uh, uh, forensics is coming out to, to uh, also process the scene. Could you please pronounce your name for us on the record? Decanio. D E C A N I O. First name. Gerard. G E R A R D. How you mentioned again? This guy is someone you. Been there before. Talk about you, you were familiar with this guy before this. Yeah, yes, that's correct. We, we've been we've been looking him for him for the past couple of weeks, and now we realize that he had some sort of a hiding place set up in the attic. Uh, SWAT was able to determine that once they got into the, went into the building. Uh, uh, so we yeah we've been we've been look, we've been actively looking for this guy. In fact, the the bolo has been sent out. Pasco had the bolo as well. So uh, we've all been looking for him. We've had a bolo for two weeks for about, about two weeks. And you you know, the felony, the domestic strangulation, what other charges could this guy be looking at? We say he's been on your radar. Oh, yeah. Well, today he's, he just piled a couple more on him, uh, probably resisting, and then crawling through the attic and dropping into somebody else's uh, uh, duplex is going gonna, is gonna to add a burglary, probably a burglary charge. We're still, you know, we're still talking to him and, and, and the, the victim, and, and we'll, we'll put this together, but there's at least, at least two more charges coming. And are you able to talk about why you had been looking for him? Yeah, it was it was a domestic relationship, a domestic issue. Uh, he was wanted for uh, domestic battery by strangulation. So, I mean, because of the you know privacy thing, we don't want to get into the victim's name and so forth. But yes, that's what it was for. It's and a. Will you? I just want to clarify. So the attic has that been his hiding place for a couple weeks? Well, we didn't know that at. We didn't know that going into this, but apparently, uh, when the SWAT officers went in there and they found that he had some sort of a. Way to escape and get up into the attic and, and, and hide up there. So yes, that might have might have that might have been. Did you get like supplies and things? Like that? I I didn't go in. I was at the command post and the, and the, I don't know if that's. But we'll we'll look into that. You know, during the uh, the rest of the search of the uh, of the duplex. The victim. I know you can't name them. Is it the same victim for this charge as it was the previous charge, or are there separate victims? For, for the uh, the same. Okay. Same. One one thing I failed to mention is when, when we flow into these scenes is we. We have a unified SWAT team in Pasco, so we have members from Newport Ritchie and Port Ritchie as part of our Pasco SWAT team, so that keeps that relationship tight, and that's how we're able to flow right into these real easy. And what would you say to the person who calls this in and stops the officer? Well, I mean, we, we applaud him. You know, he, he was there as a, uh, uh, they were, apparently they were drinking and partying. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but when it got out of hand, he had the foresight to, to leave there. And he ran into one of our officers, gave him the initial report, and then called 911 again. We listened to the 911 tape where he says that, you know, what he did wouldn't let her leave. It was holding her against her will, and he was loading his weapons. So when I spoke to Captain Hill about that, that's when it decided that it had to be a SWAT call out. How dangerous it is, is it for your guys when, when it's discovered that someone has a hiding place within the home with an escape route? I mean, I, I don't mean to keep harping on this attic situation, yeah. but that's out of the ordinary when we cover stories like this. Uh, it, go ahead. Yes, so, so, so we train for tactics such as that, and, and we have tactics not to be disclosed, but it does heighten our elevation. It heightens the tactics that we'll use to uh, safely get that suspect out. What does it say about him, though, that he had this whole... Oh, he, 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 yeah, he's, he's a criminal. He's prepared. He doesn't want to give up. Um, and so that heightens the situation for all of us.
I mean, the, the SWAT team was out there for, for hours calling him out, coaxing him out, and he knew we were out there. They were out there. He knew that we were, law enforcement was out there, and he just decided not to come out and, uh, until, it was, uh, we, we, until the issue was forced, you know. So uh, he could have walked out the front door, you know, but he... We had a loudspeaker calling him by name to come out of the house. And in the end, he did come peacefully. Sorry? In the end, he did come peacefully. He did come out peacefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> Any additional questions? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Can we get that clock back picture before you get Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. yeah, we could kill oh, the notes. Right. Yep. Are we also able to get the 911 call? Uh, yeah. I'm going to have to redact it because it gives the female's name and, and everything, so yeah.